Father, take us, dear Lord, in your blessed hands. And God, may the anointing of God be ours. And dear Lord, help these dear men of God. Lord, help them to pray for me as they would have me to pray for them if they were standing where I'm standing right now. Lord, I know I can't preach. I've never learned how, and how I thank you for that. I thank you, dear Lord, that November the 23rd, 1943, you called me to preach. I praise your name, Lord, that today, though the battle's been long, you've been faithful. You've loved us and cared for us and never forsaken us. And Lord, now, we look to Thee and depend upon Thee for power. Set a guard before our lips that we would say nothing that would be offensive to Thy blessed Holy Spirit. God, may we be directed in our thinking. God, may we lose sight of man. And God, I pray that we will get another glimpse a Lord of Jesus Christ, loving enough to die for us. We'll thank and praise you in Christ's blessed name. Amen and amen. I know today we're living in a time when men are on every hand, seemingly throwing in the towel and calling it quits. Now, I say like Brother Robert did a while ago, let's not be too hasty. Let's not judge them so rashly. But, brethren, if there's a thing that we need to do today is pray for the man of God. He's going through a time like he's never went through in all of his days, in all of his life. I know in my own ministry, I've been preaching many years now, and I've never faced a day like I'm facing in this hour right now. Now, I was thinking so much of what our brother said a minute ago. I'm away from home on an average of nine months out of every year. My lot in life, and I'm not telling you a sad story, my lot in life, uh, my friend can be considered by some to be quite lonely. I, after I leave the services at night, I go to a motel room and the door is closed. And nobody but a man that's lived this kind of life can know the loneliness that will follow you to that motel room when you're hundreds of miles away from your family. But also there's something else that'll come to that motel room with you, and that's the spirit of the devil. Amen. He'll torment you. He'll bring everything that He can to get you down in that very hour as you're laying there. And as you're thinking about home and your family and your wife, how many times the devil has invaded that room where I slept. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you, a friend of mine, I believe we're living in a day when there's more demon spirits to loose on God's men than there ever has been in all the world. Have you ever been down lately praying and seemed like suddenly your mind was caught off way over yonder? Have you ever had the Bible in your hands and reading it from the Word of God and suddenly your mind was way down yonder? Amen. How many has that ever happened to? I'll tell you, then you go to bed and go to sleep and the devil invades your dream life. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. All right. And shut up tonight a judge a man to heart. And so men seemingly are throwing in the towel and calling it quits and said, I'm giving up. I'm just laying down my Bible. I'm quitting. There's no need for me to keep on going on. I might as well just quit. And Jeremiah said, I won't speak anymore in his name. I'll just shut my mouth. I'll quit the ministry. I'll just throw in the towel and quit. But after what? While he said, it shut up in my bones, amen, and I can't stay, hallelujah. I want to preach on some things tonight. Here's some texts that I want to share with you. I'll tell you tonight, and I trust it'll bless your heart, some things that keep me from quitting are some reasons why I can't quit, amen. I know today that a lot of men are discouraged, and a lot of men are giving up, but I'm glad and tonight there are some reasons that keeps me going on. Hallelujah. I know today there are some things that will 
will make you discouraged when I see the unconcernedness of the people of God. Amen. That will discourage any preacher. Amen. When a man's prayed and stayed before God and tried to prepare to preach and you see folks shaking old Mickey Mouse and I see what time it is and they're timing you and my friends see them sitting there asleep unconcerned. Many of them got their own children that's lost without God. I know that's enough to make you just almost want to throw in the towel. But brother, I'm glad, glory to God, there's some reasons I can't quit. Amen. Number one, the first reason I can't quit is when I look at the Savior. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Let me tell you something right now. There's too many preachers that's got the congregation looking at them. But it's not me you need to see. It's a glimpse of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something right now. I'll tell you when your church will start dying. It's when, my friend, you're propagating yourself more than you are Jesus. Amen. It's Him they need to see. Amen. That's one of the reasons I can't quit. When I see how much He loved me. When I see that He condescended and came down in this low land of sin and sorrow. When I look up and hear Him say, Father, I'll go and come down in this low land of sin and sorrow. When I see Him, hallelujah, bless the Lord of my soul, loving me when I was so unlovely, caring for me when I didn't care, the son of an ex bootlegger Lord, I've got a sawmill shack liver. Lord, I've got to know my soul. I love me so much that he was willing to come down and die for me. Hallelujah. That's the reason I can't quit. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Do you know when you're going to decide to quit? When you get your eyes off of him. You know, when Peter went down, is when he saw the waves instead of the one that made them. That's when you go down, too. Amen. Some of you preachers right now, you probably already got your resignation wrote out. Now, I'll tell you, when you wrote it out, get your head up. I'll let you know when we're going to pray. Look at me. Look at me. Amen. I'll tell you when you wrote it out. <laughs> it's when you said, Lord, they've torn down the waters. They're looking for me. That's when you wrote it out. Amen. I'll tell you when you'll do your best preaching. It's when you got your eyes on Him. Amen. Do you preachers remember when you started out preaching? You had that dime store Bible with a zipper around it. And you had memorized John 3, 16, and there wasn't a question in the Bible you couldn't answer. <laughs> Amen. You would tackle any of them. <laughs> Amen. You know John 3, 16? And brother, there wasn't nothing you couldn't answer. But I want to tell you something. Did you ever come to the end of yourself? In a message? <laughs> Amen. Get up to preach and just say, Duh. You really thought you was hooked up and got there and found out you was unplugged. Amen. I remember one time I found out, I was a young Christian, I found out they were going to call on me to pray. And I went out back in the woods and I got down and I made me a prayer. Wrote it out. I mean, I, I perfected that thing. I made it and then edited it. I cut all the rough corners off. I polished that prayer. I mean, I had it made like you ain't never heard one in your life. I read it and got to crying myself. I just know it was going to be too powerful for them. I just know they'd never be able to stand it. I could, I could close my eyes and see bonnets in there. I saw people passing out under the power. I was a dandy. 
I ain't never heard one like it before then or since. But I want to tell you something. I had it all fixed. I mean, listen. You know this program, uh, 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 Impossible or something. I mean, I had everything figured out. Had my zipper over all zone. And I got back behind the bench just so I could put my prayer down in here. And when they called on me, I was going to get down between the view and pull my prayer out and lay it right down before me. And I had my voice. I could get them all in pear-shaped tones coming out, you know. I'd even got out and practice and said, Me, 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 me. I had it all just right. And they said, we'll ask Brother Blue to lead in prayer. I said, they'll never be able to take it. I got down between the pews and unzipped my bib of my overalls. That's the deepest I ever reached in a pocket in my life. I went down, down in the corners. Over in this corner. I mean, I felt I like to tore that pocket off trying to find that prayer. But it was gone. And you know what my prayer turned out to be? Oh, me. Listen, I found out right there, brother, you can't preach, you can't pray, you can't sing. There's nothing you can do that's worthwhile until you get your eyes on Him, the crucified one. He is the only one that will have you. Hallelujah, anyhow. He's the reason I can't quit. Hallelujah to God. Some of you said, oh, you don't understand my situation. Why don't you shut up? In 27 years of this battleground, there ain't many places you've been in that I ain't been there to. Amen. I'm like Berman Cape said one time. I've been accused of everything except stealing a nigger baby and painting it white. And that's probably been told by now. I've had it all told on me. I've been tucked to Supreme Court. I've been lied on. Every, you take, name it, it's been said. Somebody said, why don't you quit? <laughs> I can't. When I see him, hallelujah, Isaiah said, uh, there in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, by his stripes were healed. Uh, when I see him hanging between the heavens and the earth, uh, and his finish mired, uh, and his whiskers pulled out, uh, and spittle running down to his face, uh, and his back laid open, uh, when I see him hanging there, uh, and the sun refused to shine, uh, and the rocks begin to rend, uh, and the wreck, hallelujah. Uh, when I look at him, I, I can't quit ever. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You know why you're quitting? You've been feeling sorry for yourself. You don't like me no more. They won't even shake hands with my wife no more. Them been mean to me. Don't appreciate me no more. Won't even buy me a birthday present. You hound. You hound. The very reason you're quitting is because you're sorry for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Get that head up. You look at me. I mean, eyeball me, boy. See, a lot of preachers have to preach with their eyes closed. I don't have to. I can eyeball you. I can look right at you. <laughs> Hallelujah, anyhow. He's the reason I can't quit. He loved me when I was unlovely. He cared when I didn't care. He saved me when I only go to hell. I can't quit. Amen. When I look at him, I can't quit. When I look at him. When I, when I said they talked about me, he said they did me too. 
When I said, they don't like me no more, Lord, he said, they didn't like me either. When I said, they've been mean to me, Lord, he said, son, they've been mean to me too. Amen. Amen. Why, you said, preacher, you just don't know how bad they are to me. You just don't know how bad they are to me. You don't know what they've done to me, preacher. Well, folks, if you'll just get a look at Calvary, what you went through will seem so little. Oh, no wonder that old songwriter said, Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. So the reason I can't quit is when I look at Him. Number one. Number two. The reason I can't quit is when I look at the saint. Amen. Ah, when I look at the Savior, I can't quit. And then when I look at the saint, I can't quit. Amen. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Ed, when you look at the saint? Brother, I get the feeling sorry for myself. And God always does send one of His old saints around to cheer me up. Amen. I remember one time I was way down in central Florida in revival. No, listen. They didn't know it, but I was so discouraged. I thought I was going through such a hard battle and thought all the things were so rough. One day, we was in revival. And the preacher said, one of my members wants you to come out, and you and I to come out and have dinner with her. And I said, that's all right with me. We got in an old four-wheel drive vehicle and started out down through some swamp land. And some of the times, I didn't know whether we were going to make it or not. And after a while, we drove up to nothing more, nothing less than just an old shack. I mean that literally in the fullest sense. It was a shack. No windows, an old rusty tin roof. And we drove up, and the windows had shutters on them. And we drove up. And as we drove up, while there's an old lady stepped up out of her house. I mean that literally. She stepped up over a doorstop, and the house didn't have no floor in it. Didn't have no floor in it. And she's... Why, she was drying her hands off on a little white faded out apron. And she said, preachers, and she began to shout. Said, Lord, you've let some preachers come to see me. Amen. She said, come in, preachers. I just about got dinner ready. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, by then, I'm telling you, my feet have had took an itching spell. I was on holy ground. Amen. Amen. I stepped over on that old floor, and she had it just swelled. You see, back on the floor, they got lawn more how the old folks used to sweep the yards. She had that sand swept, just as pretty. Oh, ever just thing was so smooth. And when you walk through a house, you left tracks in the sand. No, oh, listen. She shouted for a while and said, Oh, it's so good to have preachers to come to see me. Amen. And she ran up to me and patted me on the cheeks. Oh, she said, Are you an angel? I never have felt like an angel before, but I've started to flutter my wings. Amen. <laughs> she had two little bitty nail tags with some little bitty ruffled pieces of cloth around them, and a little bitty pillar of a sword on top of each one of them. She said, Preacher, you sit down on this and. And, Pastor, you sit down on this. And I'll have dinner ready in just a minute. And an old wood stove with a flue run out the side of the wall. <laughs> mm, I'm a getting drunker than I ever been in my life. And her table was a piece of an old enamel stove with some nails drove down through the corner and some old legs. And that enamel had flaked off. Mm. When you think, my friend, God hasn't still got some young ones around here, you're sadly mistaken. Amen. 
There's a young preacher one time said, Oh, that crowd's against us. Oh, there's too many that's against us. That old preacher said, Lord, open that young man's eyes. And all of a sudden, no young on the mountainside. God has some horses that was falling in the bits. God still got some saints. Amen. Hallelujah, anything. You go lollygagging around and say, I'm, I'm by myself. I'm the only preacher that's preaching nowadays. I ought to box your jaws. You got the place you thought you was the only one, didn't you? This may come as a shock to you, but God's got some more besides me and you. Amen. <laughs> mm. That old saint said, Saddam, we sit down at that little old enamel top table. And she had two little bowls. One of them had some butter beans in it. And another one had, I don't remember what, just a little bit of something in the bowl. And she tore one piece of bread in two and laid a half a piece here for him and, and said, I got some of the best water you've ever drank. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. When you got to feeling sorry for yourself, when you had two cars in the garage uh, and two bathrooms in the house uh, and air conditioning and central heat, amen, uh, and groceries in the closet, uh, oh, you couldn't appreciate God. Uh, but that old woman sat down uh, and said, Help yourself. Uh, hallelujah. I said, I'll have some butter beans, please. I dipped me out some and some more of whatever's out of the bowl. I put your hat to yourself. I'm honest, you'll laugh at me if you will. But Milford Biddles, I went back to that bowl again and again. Again and again. Never been as hungry in my life. I eat butter beans out of the preacher, eat butter beans. And I hold my hands up. I never did see the bottom of that bowl. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Can I praise the Lord? God still got some saints. Amen. Hallelujah in His hands. Oh, you say, I'm about to quit. There ain't nobody around. God still got some young ones. Amen. You and your juniper bush. Amen. I'll venture to say, ooh, like a packy pie, don't you? You whiner and belly acre. Amen. Hallelujah. 7.30. Got plenty of time. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in this house. I can't quit when I look at the foes of the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't quit when I look at the feebleness of the saints. I can't quit when I look at the food of the saints. Hallelujah. Oh, if I preached all this, I'd, I'd be up here when the morning sun rose. Amen. But I'm glad God's got some young ones out there on the hillside. The Bible said, see, that we're compassed about with so great a cloud. Oh, hallelujah. There's my door to God and waving the flag and saying, keep on. Don't let down. It's better farther on. Keep on and go ahead. Don't let down now. Hallelujah, anything. Now, all of you preachers.
preachers would like to preach, wouldn't you? Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, preacher blues. I'm just going to give up. I'm going to look at the sign of Cain. There used to be an old lady up here in the adjoining county. They said she was a little senile. Well, that's just a fancy word to say she's crazy. Say she's crazy. She used to go along in the summertime when they hauled cotton on the wagons. And when the locks would fall off of the wagon, she'd pick them up, the locks of cotton. She'd take them home, that little old house she lived in, and she'd pick the seeds out of them by hand. And some of you old-timers will know what I'm talking about. Now, when she got enough of that cotton, she'd card it. And she'd do that till she had enough to make a quilt. She'd hang them old quilting things up in that living room. And every stitch was made with prayer. You'd go by that old house, an old shack, hear a little squeaking voice. You wouldn't want an album of it. A little old bitty weak voice singing. I found a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent word. What more can we say than to you? Said you who unto Jesus for refuge have fled. She'd pick blackberries in the summertime and make jelly. And when you got sick in the winter time, she'd find somebody that you'd think you'd never find nobody's. Unfortunate as she, but you'd find her. And said, I've been making a quilt just for you. Mm. And said, I canned some good blackberry jelly and I brought it over thinking you might want some. Hallelujah. Before she died, I'd lost track of her knowing not where she was at. She could take when you had a high fever, that old saint would take a washcloth. Just a plain old wash rag. And wait it and put on your forehead. It felt so good. Before she died, she sent for me. I found her of all places in the county poorhouse. I got there before she died. She couldn't hardly see. She said, Is that you, Ed? And I said, Yes, I made Ellen. It's me. Oh, she said, you got here just right. Said, I'm about to go on home. She said, I believe I sang your song, Ed. I said, hallelujah. Do it. She started by singing, My strongest try goes now or past. My triumph is begun. Oh, come, angel band, come and around. I started looking for him. Amen. Glory! When I look at the saint, I can't quit. Hallelujah! Oh, Dr. Weigel, that great old soldier that wrote that song, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. He was over in Campbell's Clinic, I believe, in Chattanooga. The old man kept telling the nurses, I want to go home. I want to go home. 
And he lived over at Tennessee Temple, you know. And I said, Dr. Wagner, you can't go home yet. Oh, I want to go home. Oh, let me go on home. Old Dr. Lee Robinson came in one day, and the nurses was in there, and he was standing there. Old Dr. Wagner said, Dr. Lee, I want to go home. And the nurses said, Dr. Lee, he's been just talking and wanting to go home. Said, tell him he can't. Oh, the old doctor said, he ain't wanting to go back over to school. He just wanting to go on home. When I get to grumbling and look along the way and find some old saints that has battled the storm and has fought the devil and stood up against the foes of this world, brother, I can't quit. I can't quit. Hallelujah. Next of all, 7.30ish. Amen. I can't quit. Bless you, dear heart, when I look at the sinner. Amen. I can't quit when I look at the sinner. Amen. You know a lot of evangelists. Evangelist told me the other day, said, uh, see a while back, said, I don't see why you mess with these little old bitty churches. Don't let them find out what a time I'm having. They'd be sure to want to get in on it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah in the house. Amen. Why, bless the name of God. Somebody said, oh, preacher blue. Tina, stand up, honey. Come up here to Daddy just a minute. Come here to Daddy. Come here to Daddy, honey. Come here, baby. Mm. This is my little girl. I haven't even got to watch her grow up. I come in home every week and she's changed. I don't even get to see her grow up. My little old grandsons, I'll leave one time and come back and they're talking. I haven't even got to see them grow up. My phone bill gets awful high sometimes, Brother Robert. I just got to talk to them a little bit. I just got to. Amen. Oh, baby. Stand up, darling. Stand up over there. That's my wife. I want to go on record and tell you that's my sweetheart. I still send her flowers. You laugh if you want to. I believe it ought to be that way in your life. I still write her love letters. Yeah, I do. I ain't ashamed. I was going through Birmingham some time ago, and I saw a florist shop, and I just stopped and wired her some flowers. God gave her to me. I'd never saw her till when I got out of the army, March 1946. And one night she came to a cottage prayer meeting where I was at, and she walked through the door behind her mama and another sister. The Holy Ghost said, "There's your wife." Thank you, honey. We got married three weeks later. That's 27 years ago. Now somebody said, Brother Ed, why is it that you stay away from home? Is the money prospects? I ought to knock a knot on your head. You'd have to climb a ladder to scratch. If that's what you think, honey, you're crippled too high for crutches. What I'm trying to say is you're a nut. Amen. Billy Kelly, I love my family. And this may sound sissy, but I cry myself to sleep at night. I love to be with them. I love 
up for that little old grandson to come running up across the yard and say, Papa, 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 Papa. And get right down under his neck and say, Who sugar that boy? And he said, Papa. Boy, that's the best sugar in the world. That may be slobberous to somebody, but boy, that's sugar to a Papa. Amen, Miffin Biddle. Somebody said, what is it that keeps you out there away from your family? What is it that'll make you set yourself up in an old lonely motel room? What is it that'll make you pack that suitcase and head for an airport? What is it that'll make you say goodbye to your family and live in a strange town, eat strange food, drink strange water, live in a strange bed? What is it that'll make you do that? It's sinners that make me do that. When I look at them, I can't do nothing else but go. If you're going for any other reason, honey, you're going for the wrong reason. These old preachers will call me and said, Will you come and help me? And I said, As soon as I get an opening, I'll come. And they said, Well, we can't pay you much. I said, hush right there. If God's in it, He'll take care of it. And I go. We fly over to the islands. I was there in a meeting last summer. Old brother Ron Garris was there with me. One service, a little black girl, about 14 year old, come down the aisle. That British accent said, tears just poor. She said, Sir, I desire to be saved. I said, Honey, he desires to save you. Amen. I work with the Choctaw and Creek Indians a lot in Oklahoma. They're poor folks. But oh, glory to God, oh my soul. When I can see the old copper colored skin coming down that aisle, that face looking like a rock, get to me and said, I, I want to be saved. That's why I can't quit, amen. That's why I can't quit, amen. Glory to God, oh my soul. Now let me go on. I, I know it's just 7 30. <clears throat> I can't quit when I look at the sinner. I can't quit when I look at the saint. I can't quit when I look at the Savior. And then I can't quit when I look at the judgment seat. Amen. Amen. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm not looking forward to that. Mm-mm. Oh, you say you're afraid about being lost? No, boy. Mm-mm. Oh, God. Oh, God. You said, Preacher Roo, I ain't done nothing I'm ashamed of. Boy, I can't say that. Boy, I can't say that. I just have to be honest with you. I can't say that. I've done some old ugly things. Oh, you said that before I got saved. Now, let's, be, let's just be honest. Don't sit there and lie to me. I ain't grown no wings yet. No. And there's a judgment seat coming, folks. And each day when I look up and remember it, that seat's coming. It makes me want to live just a little closer. Not quit. No, when I see the Bema seat, I don't want to quit. I just want to keep on keeping on. Oh, I want to make that record just a little cleaner. Hallelujah. My wife come to get me one day. 
at the airport. We got in. My little girl Tina had took a white piece of paper about as wide as the book board here and put it across the end of the carport. And with a piece of red crayon, it said on there, Welcome home, Daddy. Oh, of all the things I'm... Mm. Mm. Of all the things I want to hear is to hear him say, Say, preacher, boo, there are some things in my life I don't want to have. I'm just about ready to quit. I've been so discouraged. Brother Sammy, can I give an invitation? Can I? Come on, girls, to the instruments. I just got to do this. I feel like maybe there's some preacher here. Maybe there's some Sunday school teacher here. Maybe there's some old evangelist. That old suitcase about wore out. Maybe there's somebody here right now that just said, I, I'm about to throw in the towel. Maybe tonight what you need is a trip down to the old... Oh, God! I want to keep on traveling on. Brother Turner... Get your song ready. What's it going to be? How's thine own way? That's a good one, brother. I want every head bowed. Every eye closed. It's all right, ain't Sam? I know it is. Sammy, help me watch, boy. I wonder if somebody here right now said, Preacher, I come to this Thanksgiving meeting, this Jubilee. I'd have to admit it. Heart's kind of heavy. I said, when I get back home... Might as well just kind of throw in the towel. Everybody's turned against me. Ain't nobody loves me no more. Preacher! I've been so discouraged. Maybe there's a Sunday school teacher about ready to go to that pastor and say, Pastor, ain't we just a few little old boys and girls coming to that class? I might as well just quit. Preacher! Maybe you've already begun to look for pasteboard boxes to pack in. I wonder if there's somebody right now that said, Preacher, God has dealt with my heart tonight. I'll have to admit it, I, I was about defeated. I was just about ready to throw in the old towel, and I was so discouraged. I wonder if you just raise up your hand and say, Preacher Blue. I, I raise my hand and say, I need prayer. Would you raise it up right now? There's one, two. There's another. Amen. I wonder if there's another one back there anywhere that said, Brother Ed, God's dealt with my old heart tonight. Will you raise that hand up and say, Pray for me? Come on. Come on, raise it up high. Raise it up high. There are some that raise their hands. Two people, I believe, raise their hands. Our Father, if that's the only two it was worth preaching for. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Help us in these dark days to be faithful. Not to be weary and well-doing, but we'll reap in due season if we faint not. Lord, have your way as we stand to sing this old hymn, Have Thine Own Way. In Christ's name, anybody needs to come, help them to do it right now. In Jesus' name, let's stand. Brother